Hello, we're going to be doing a very loose, fun, quirky interpretation of this. It's going to be your drawing skills. Now what I want you to do is really starting to draw in a very abstract, loose way. We're going to be using a biro to do the drawing and then we're going to come in and play around with some of the colours later on. The problem that you're going to find with this is your downward pressure. Do kind of consider that. It can be difficult in this process if you're not used to it. What we're going to do is draw this picture on the piece of paper and we're going to be looking at using hand and eye coordination to a really extreme level. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this and not on this. I might glance occasionally but generally I'm going to be just drawing freestyle and it's going to be very loose with my attention completely on these two people with the Satsumas or Clementines depending on what they are. I'm not sure how you can tell the difference from this of angle. Um, so let's get going shall we. I've got a piece of 220 GSM cartridge paper, I've got a, a range of different colours here that I've poured out from my gouache set, it's completely up to you what colours you want to use, obviously if you use different reference images the colours have to suit the reference image. And I've got a standard black um, biro with a pot of water and a, a, sim a synthetic brush, nothing huge or flashy. So, Let's get drawing. I'm going to look straight down on this and try and keep my eye as much as I can on the reference image. And I'm just going to go for it. I want to do this in a very quick, short burst of time as well. I don't want to labour into this. So, let's get going, shall we? And I'm looking up here. And you can tell where I'm kind of drawing to my right because it should be matching to what I'm seeing with my left hand. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and have a look at my picture. Obviously it's going to be really quirky and distorted, but that doesn't matter because I want you to play around with this and just get an idea of tonal quality as well as the, the ability to get line and colour to work in collaboration. So if I grab my pot of water and I'm going to start working in some nice bright that's who you miss. Now I've got his blue top, so let's grab a little bit of blue. And with the gouache, the more you water it down, the more diluted and softer it becomes. I think it might be a woman rather than a man. Getting so caught up in the structure, losing track. And I've got one of those soft, kind of light bluish bags. Coming in under here, as long as a blue bag under that, and I've got a little bit of brown. Got some yellowy brown. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of grey, that background. A little bit more 
blue scarf thing underneath the head and some brown hair. Got some black trousers dropped in and I'm going to increase the leg length and add in those blue trainers on the bottom. grey background and probably up the black the bike and we need a little bit of green so get a cerulean with some lemon will give you a nice sappy green And there we go, we've got our first sketch. Just to get your hand and eye in and get drawing. And not to get bogged down with the details like the facial feature at this stage. Now we're gonna move on to the next project. Hope you enjoy this one. Okay, so for this one, what we're gonna look at doing is just so you're getting used to the process, we're gonna work with just one color. And that's generally gonna be a gray tone. I'm taking some black. You could use a blue if you want to. It can be quite nice using a blue. Actually, I think I probably I'll add a little bit of blue into my black. It makes it a bit more interesting. And then I'm going to start drawing this in using this soft light colour. So I'm working here with first of all I'm looking at the lady um, and I can see her nose and the silhouette. Can you see that silhouette? in here so I can work that out and I'm not too worried if it's not perfect please don't worry if it isn't too perfect kind of just playing around at the moment and getting used to handling the brush and doing nice long free loose brush marks so you can see here that lovely flick and the curve of the fabric Now with the gouache you can take a little bit of a wet brush, you can soften out areas if you want to. You can see there I get like that white silhouette, which is rather nice. Grab a little bit more water and lift it off and play around with it. Or if you want, you know, you can work into it with another pigment and make it even stronger. So, I'll just build this up a little bit more. For instance, I wanted to add a little bit more of a kick. It's quite dark. I could feed in a little bit more of that black tone. Be careful, because obviously it's quite a powerful tone. Also, if you put the black down and the surface is wet, going to react just like a watercolour whereby it bleeds. You can see here you're getting a nice bleed tone. And so this is just generally playing around with the pigment and drawing. So all you're doing is just drawing with paint. Keeping the paint very soft and loose so that you can get used to where you want it to be and get your head around the basic shapes that you're trying to generate. You can always pull the background in as well if you want to. I'm looking at this lady here in the background. It's up to you on how far you want to take the drawing, or whether you want to focus more on the women in the foreground, which is 
purchase in the throat. Some students rather like to draw in surrounding context of whatever your characters are doing. So if you wanted to, you could look at drafting in this crate of fruit. But just keeping things really simple, dilute your paint down and draw with the brush. If you like to draw in the features, so you might want to dilute this down a little bit more because she's got a little bit of shadow on her face. And then like, the nose is highlighted and then you get a bit of the cheek and the chin. Again, you've got the eye socket here. As you can see there, you got a very simple basic drawing. Just using the brush and the black gouache. Once you've got that drawing down, then you can start drawing into it. Now obviously you might need to give it a few minutes to dry off or it's going to start, you know, basically wrecking your biro. So do give it a bit of time or you'll go through the paper because it'll be a bit wet and flimsy. It's all very it's very vulnerable when wet. But it will dry fairly fast with gouache. So if I just take that away and I can lean on my desk, it means I can start drafting in some of the details. Now these details can be kept really loose or you can do it quite accurate. It's all kind of up to you on how fast you want to draw and how loose you want the picture to appear.
nice way to work with a biro because it's very long loose fluid lines is to keep your biro on the surface and try not to lift it off at all. It'll give you a much more fluid and dynamic type of drawing approach. Also get those little grey cells working. It's like an etch a sketch for us. Okay, and you should end up with something like that relatively quick. Hopefully, yours has come out just as well. It's a nice little sketch. So, let me show you the next stage up. So, students generally ask me what's the difference between watercolours and gouache, and gouache is kind of more an adult's poster paint. 
it'll give you a chalkier coverage and it's always a little bit unstable so you know with watercolors after a while once it's dried thoroughly you can't move it around the surface so much where with the gouache as soon as you add water in you can lift it up and you can manipulate it around and we're not going to be doing too much of that in this type of project but it's wise that you understand what the medium can achieve should you go wrong but you can fix it now i'm going to put my biro to one side and first of all, I'm going to start grabbing a little bit of clean water. And the idea with this first coloured layer that we're going to be applying is that you're just getting down a basic colour that you're going to then draw on top of. So let's build up a little bit of skin colour because I'm going to go in for the face. The more water you add, the lighter the tone will appear on the piece of paper. You can always do a little check if you want up the top. That looks pretty good to me. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna then just take my brush and start drafting in my lady. I'm aware that she needs to be slightly more to the right so that I've got enough room for the child. I'm generally putting in a splodge for the face. Uh, I'm gonna End up coming up and grab a little bit of black for the hair. And I'm going to dilute this down so it's fairly soft. Like a little bit from the neck. And then I'm going to grab some of the yellow. T-shirt. Mix the yellow lemon in with the yellow ochre. I should be getting kind of quite a sappy colour. And I'm not worried about things bleeding. I'm kind of drawing the brush, and this is giving me the first layer of the drawing so I can set out the proportions and make things look pretty decent. So I can see, for instance, that is slightly sitting underneath her head. And then if I took a head, the shirt is just slightly shy. And grab some skin tone. And then I've got the child coming in here. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. Please try not to worry about being perfect. Spray down a little bit of colour. The child shirt. Oops, I just splattered things, it doesn't really matter like I said with this. And there's kind of like a grey shadow in the back of the shorts. I'm going to grab a little bit of black and white to make a very soft diluted grey. Which are white. Okay. 
It's a very loose study. If you wanted to, you could play and put in some colours in the background, so you've got the watermelons. Obviously you just treat it like any other colour mixing. If you take a little bit of yellow with a little bit of blue, you could put in a little bit of watermelon in the background. Like so, and get some limes. But it's completely up to you and how far you want to play around with this. Sometimes students quite like putting in the narrative as they can see. It just adds an extra dimension to the artwork. Right now at this point I need to allow that to dry. And you could give it a quick flick over with a hairdryer if you wanted to, or you can go and have a break. Some people also quite like to have runs, so they'll tilt the board up and that way the paint will run down it. And other people like to flick so you get a few dots across it and make it a little bit more livelier. Again, it's completely up to you on which direction you want to take the work. I'll see you in a moment once it's dry. Right, so I've allowed it to just dry off. Um, if you want to, you could touch up a few things so you see like the headband if you wanted to. I'm not, I'm going to keep this very loose and free. I think it'll be better that way. And now I want you to go in with your biro and to do your drawing. So I'm going to take the palette out of the way. That way I won't lean on any of it. It'll give me a little bit more free arm. And then I want you to use a biro to start drifting, um, drawing the drawing in. Drawing the drawing in. Start getting that drawing in. Now the trick with biros is first of all, you want to control your pressure and get in some basic structure. So don't worry if your drawing and your colour slightly drifts out, it really doesn't matter. You can see here I've got a bit of skin colour where really I probably should have had hair, but it doesn't matter, it just adds into the nature of this type of drawing. So I'm going to just get this drawing down and I'm trying to be quite loose and free. You can see there, I've been very soft, very gentle, just tracing it in, keeping my pen very um, quick on the movements on the surface of the paper, and also keeping my eye more on the picture than on my reference image. Once I've got that rough drawing in, then I can start coming around and sharpening up some of the detail. My, fa my hand moves down the pen, just like when you're drawing, um, and you can start getting in a little bit more the detail. Now the trick here though is still to keep the picture fairly loose uh, and not to overdo it. It's easy to get kind of pulled into the detail and start fine tuning things. But keep your pen moving on the surface of the paper. And just use those guidelines to build up some interesting lines. Right, so there you go, you've got fundamentally two people studies, very quick, freestyle, and because you've got that initial drawing from putting in the colour, you'll find it a lot easier to get things in the most accurate of places. Normally if you do any drawing and you've done it the first time, it's a lot easier the second time around. See here, I'm just putting in a little bit of background you obviously don't have to do. It was a bit of like fun just to set up a bit more detail. You could build up more tonal contrast by learning to really control that by a rope and giving yourself the option to exaggerate tonal contrast within a picture. Okay, you can see how we go whacking the bottom. And you should have something like that. Easy peasy.